Chewie, I have a special surprise for you. Tonight, we are having a Disney dinner from the Yacht Club. <laughs> no, no, we don't have to go to Florida. We don't even need to leave Canada and not just because the borders are still closed. Welcome to Teacup for One. My name is Matt and I have two degrees. Friends, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know that I love Disney food. And I also love reviewing Disney food. If you like Disney food and you like reviews, you will like Matt Reviews Disney Foods. Roll the clips. Okay, next up I am trying the Adventureland Spring Rolls. One's pepperoni, one's cheeseburger. I don't know which is which. Let's give this a try. Great. It tastes like a cheeseburger, you know. If you like cheeseburger, and if you like spring rolls, you'll like this. Matt reviews Disney foods. So, I am at Zuri's Sweet Shop celebrating the Lion King, and I just purchased a dark chocolate chili pepper Mickey chocolate thing. Now, let's see how it goes. So, there's definitely hints of chocolate and some chili. And, you know, if you like chocolate and if you like chili, you'll like this. Matt reviews Disney foods. So I have the blue milk here from the milk stand. Mm. I mean. It's good if, if you like milk and if you like blue, you will like this. Matt reviews Disney foods. Meow. So imagine my excitement when I found out that this weekend, and this weekend only, a restaurant not too far from me was offering a five course takeout meal entirely composed of menu items from Walt Disney World. And just to clarify, this menu is not made up of stuff literally from the Disney theme parks. Like they didn't ship this food over the border from Florida or anything. As far as I know, all of these items have been made in house, either inspired by the recipes from the parks or directly made from the recipes from the Disney theme parks. Let's go review some Disney foods. Okay, let's go eat this. Okay guys, we're back. And I haven't even tasted anything yet, but I can already tell that this is going to be the most magical experience like of my month so far. And I mean, granted, we are still kind of in lockdown, so the bar isn't super high, but even if the bar was high, this is a pretty magical experience. Having access to Disney Parks food here in Canada, amazing. And I don't know for sure, but I'm almost positive that this event is being thrown by fellow Disney lovers. As soon as I got to the Dalhousie Yacht Club, they had this beautiful Mickey topiary on display in the pickup area. They had framed photos of Disney World. And you want to talk about Disney magic? They had a table filled with Disney pins. And you could take a Disney pin. And since I was like one of the last people picking up, they let me take a handful of them. So no matter what, I've <laughs> I have a ton of new Disney pins now. I, I'm so excited. <laughs> Ooh, Pinocchio. I wonder if I got any teacups. <gasps> Oswald! Sweet. Um, just, no, sorry. We have to focus on the food. But let me know if you want me to do a video where I show you the fun pins I got. Okay, let's start. Okay, now 
First up, we have the Cobb Salad, inspired by the Cobb Salad from the Brown Derby at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Um, if we don't have any salad historians watching, the Cobb Salad was originally created by the owner of the Hollywood Brown Derby, way back in Hollywood's heyday. I probably should have a year for you, except, you know, I'm about to eat, I don't feel like doing labor-intensive Wikipedia research, but the owner of the uh, Hollywood Brown Derby was Rob Cobb. I mean, his name was probably Robert Cobb, but I like to call him Rob Cobb. And then, as the story goes, one day he had to make a salad for some reason. Again, I could look it up, except I'm too hungry to do so. And he just took everything that he had available at his disposal, threw it into a salad, put some French dressing on it, and it was a hit. So, the ingredients of a traditional Cobb salad are thus. Lettuce, obviously, turkey, bacon, blue cheese, tomato, as well as hard-boiled egg, and avocado. And the key, as far as I understand it, is for everything to be finely chopped. So it's just as much about like the finely chopped ingredients as it is the ingredients themselves. And for preparation alone, I will say, everything came beautifully displayed, finely chopped, can't go wrong. And I think that's the thing with the Cobb salad, is that it's such a simple salad that you really can't go wrong as long as you have all the ingredients. They're all quality versions of those ingredients and you just put it all together. So let's try it. Mmm. 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 Now, just like I said, with a Cobb salad, it's a general rule of thumb as far as I'm concerned as a self-proclaimed Cobb salad expert, that as long as you have those key ingredients present and they're like not rotted or stale or anything, the salad will be good. All the ingredients are here. They're not rotted. They're not stale. In fact, they are all pretty top-notch. Like the turkey, for example, like these are thick chunks of turkey. Yeah, it's not Lunchables lunch meat or anything. I think this is like an actual turkey breast that they cooked and chopped up specifically for the salad. I could be wrong. I'm not a chef. I don't know. But as an average consumer, that's the vibe I'm getting and I appreciate it. The bacon, equally delicious. Again, I don't think this is like pre-cooked bacon. I think they cooked the bacon specifically for the salad. Avocado is fresh, definitely cut today. I mean, yeah, if you like turkey, if you like bacon, if you like avocado, if you like hard-boiled eggs, if you like tomato, if you like lettuce, if you like Cobb salads, you will like this. Matt reviews Disney foods. All right, next, inspired by the spring roll cart in Adventureland in Disney's Magic Kingdom, we have the world famous Disney cheeseburger spring rolls. Like I said, I think I ordered this entire meal just so I could have a cheeseburger spring roll again. And out of all these courses, the spring roll is the only thing I've actually had in the parks. So this is the only time I can actually compare this to the real deal, based on what I can remember from something I ate once over a year ago. So anyone who's not familiar with the cheeseburger spring rolls from Magic Kingdom, they are exactly that. They are spring rolls that have cheeseburger in them. So it's basically a combination of ground beef along with uh, some ketchup, mustard, pickles, and they probably throw some other stuff in there, but I'm not sure. So let's give it a try. Mm. Mm. Again, out of all the things that are on the menu today, this is the only item that I've actually had at Disney World, so this is the one time I can compare the two. What is the verdict? Here we go. From what I remember, the cheeseburger spring rolls in Magic Kingdom were very heavily saturated in oil. I remember picking up that spring roll and it like almost slipped out of my hand because it was just like grease, like greased lightning. But from what I remember, there was like a higher concentration of wrapper, to filling, the wrapper absorbed a ton of oil, so it was like I was eating crunchy, cheeseburger-flavored oil. And of course, these are deep fried as well, but the thing I appreciate is that there is so much more filling, so I could really appreciate the cheeseburger taste here. So, gotta say, comparing the two, I think the Yacht Club wins this one. I mean, it's not a competition, but if it was, the Yacht House just won. Matt reviews Disney foods. Okay, next up we have Flaming Tree Barbecue Ribs, which is inspired by the ribs at the Flame Tree Grill in Disney's Animal Kingdom. Disney did release their barbecue sauce recipe from the Flame Tree Grill last year, and um, I did actually Google this just so I could see what's in that recipe, so I can try to use my taste buds to see if the Yacht House did in fact use the authentic Disney recipe. According to D23, 
Flame Tree Barbecue Sauce is made up of ketchup, white wine vinegar, molasses, chili powder, paprika, ground turmeric, ground cumin, ground garlic pepper, ground cloves, onion powder, water, brown sugar, sauce, and salt. Let's try it. Never eaten with my hands on this channel. I feel like a barbarian. Yep, it's definitely got that kick of like cumin, turmeric, garlic, and clove. There's a little bit of sweetness that makes me think there is some brown sugar. And of course, there's that distinct Worcestershire sauce taste. I mean, okay, no, honestly, I'm just kidding. My taste buds aren't this refined. It tastes like barbecue sauce, but very good barbecue sauce. Truth be told, if you like pork ribs, if you like barbecue sauce, you will like the Flaming Tree Grill. Is that what it's called? I don't know. I've never been there. They're good. That's my review. Matt reviews Disney foods. Okay, next up, we have garlic ginger stir-fried noodles with vegetables inspired by part of the family style meal that they serve at Ohana, presumably for dinner. Honestly, I'm not super familiar with the Ohana menu past breakfast because I only pay attention to the breakfast at Ohana because that's where you get to meet Stitch. But I'm assuming that they serve this at dinner. So let's give it a try. Okay, I'm gonna try the noodles first. Definitely a little bit of garlic, a little bit of ginger, and they are for sure noodles. You know, if you like garlic and you like ginger, you will like these garlic ginger noodles. Hey, if you ever want to ruin a savory meal for yourself that uses ginger, just tell yourself that it kind of tastes like a gingerbread cookie. That'll confuse the bleep out of your palate. Mmm, Christmas! And for the vegetable selection, it looks like they are topped by, I think this is bok choy? Which I've never had, so it's going to be an adventure for all of us. How do I do this with one hand and not a table? Yeah, okay, hold on. Ooh, it's coming apart like a flower! I think my issues are with the vegetable and not the preparation. In terms of preparation, it's great. Like the top is wilted, the chunkier part is retaining its crunchiness and its moisture. It's like retaining all the flavors that I feel are the key components of this stir fry. So like when I bite into it, I'm getting liquid bursts that kind of taste gingery and kind of taste garlicky so honestly for for this part if you like ginger and if you like garlic and if you like bok choy or whatever this is you will like this Matt reviews Disney food. this probably should have been a given but when you eat the vegetables in the same bite as the noodles that's a game changer <sighs> all right friends We've been to Disney's Hollywood Studios. We snacked at the Magic Kingdom. We hopped on the monorail, went to the Polynesian Village Resort, had some noodles at Ohana, and things got wild at Disney's Animal Kingdom. But now we need to unwind with some dessert. And I know the perfect spot. World Showcase in Epcot, the Mexico Pavilion, for a classic Disney churro. And now I say classic Disney churro, but let's be honest, the churro is a Disneyland treat. I personally have never seen a churro on Walt Disney World property, and as far as I know, the Mexico Pavilion in Epcot is like the only place you're guaranteed to find a churro. And they're a little bit different. I think they're like churro nuggets or churro bites. And the big thing that distinguishes the Epcot churros from the Disneyland churros is that they come with Nutella. And wouldn't you know it? The Yacht Club threw in some Nutella. Now, unlike the Mexico Pavilion churros, this is not a churro nugget. It is a full-size churro, and I appreciate that. And I think this is my first time actually having a churro. Let's share in this experience together. I hope I like it more than the bok choy. 
How do I eat it? Oh my gosh. It's like heaven opened up and I heard a choir of Mickey mice singing. This is bleeping delicious. Oh my God. Like my favorite part of a freshly made donut is that crispy outside. Then you have to get through all the gross cakey doughy parts in the middle. This is like the ultimate donut. It gets rid of the middleman, the gross doughy parts in the middle, and it's just pure crispy outside donut goodness. Let's try it with Nutella. Ooh. This is so good. Well, friends, this concludes our culinary adventure around the Walt Disney World. I know I joke with food reviews on this channel a lot about how if you like this, you'll like this. Matt reviews Disney foods, and I'm gonna keep doing that because it's a meme and I personally think it's hilarious. But, no word of a lie. I think this meal was worth every penny. The food on its own merits was delicious, but the whole experience was just so special because, I don't know, there was something extra magical and fun about having food from my favorite place in the world readily available to me here on a Sunday night locally. So I want to put a big thank you out to the Dalhousie Yacht Club for organizing this event. Just the little touches that you added too, like having the pins available when we were picking up the meals, to even just the Mickey Mouse topiary in the pickup area. Pure Disney magic. Oh, and I'm probably legally obligated to say that this wasn't a sponsored video. All of these opinions are my own. However, my opinion is that this was a magical culinary experience and I hope to Walt and Mickey that the Dollhouse Yacht Club does it again. And I'm saying that knowing full well that they're planning to do it again. They mentioned that it's going to be coming back in I think April, May. I wasn't really paying attention because I was trying to pick out which pin I wanted to get but regardless they're doing it again and I cannot wait. It's going to be a different menu. They said that they want to take us all over the world and I'm so excited. So there will definitely be a follow-up video. But anyway, friends, this concludes yet another episode of Teacup 41. Let me know in the comment section down below which of those five courses was your favorite. The Cobb salad, the spring rolls, the ribs, the noodles, the churro, or let me know what Disney dish you like to make yourself at home. And if you want to be the first to know when I do another Matt Reviews Disney Foods episode, make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you haven't subscribed already. It's super easy. All you have to do is click on my face. Thanks for joining me today, everyone. My name is Matt and I have two degrees and that's the tea cup for one. Go away. <laughs>